Hi there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today we're gonna make these cute artist trading coins using some stamps from our sponsor, TopFlightStamps.com. They find the coolest stamps and supplies from all over the world and bring them back to us here in America. The stamps I'm using today are from Penelope D and that's a company out of South Africa. I'm starting off by base coating these artist trading coins with some gesso. Now this is the Jerry's Artorama world's best gesso and it is fabulous if you're ever looking for a nice thick gesso that can be thinned down. I'm going ahead and giving them a nice coat of white and then I'm going to use some distress oxides to lightly tint the color. Now these artist trading coins are made from MDF and they can also be purchased at topflightstamps.com. They're quite affordable and they're a nice substance if you want to make these to trade and have a little heft to them. Otherwise you could simply cut out two and a half inch circles from some heavyweight chipboard or a few layers of cereal box and do the same thing. So you can see here, I've added a little gesso into the Distress Oxide and it makes a really buttery, opaque paint. And I tend to use my Distress Oxides more like a paint than an ink because they're such a versatile color medium and they tend to be a little opaque on their own. I wanted to give these coins a really bright spring-like colorway that was just cheerful and fun. I don't know if I'm gonna meet many people that wanna trade um, artist trading cards or artist trading coins at the stamp show I'm going to, but I want to be prepared and worse comes to worse, I can just give them away, um, which is fun too. I'm using some bright colors. I'm using um, kind of a raspberry pink, uh, honey yellow, uh, marmalade orange. I'm using a teal and a lime green color. I'm sorry, I don't remember the Tim Holtzy names for them, but that gives you a good idea. And you could obviously use um, an acrylic paint if you prefer, like the um, Paper Artsy Fresco paint would be really good for that because it's nice and chalky. The just so it's going to give it that nice chalky finish I want that's going to make it really nice for stamping. Now I put the Penelope D stamp on a large block, but if you don't have a block large enough for this, for this technique you could actually just set it down on your craft mat and it would be just fine. The nice thing about having it on a block is that it raises it up a little bit. Now I'm just going to press my dried ATCs down to the stamp and give it a real good push. The nice thing about polymer stamps versus rubber stamps is that they do give a little more squish, so if you're on an uncomfortable conventional surface, it does seem to marry really well and give you a beautiful impression, as you can see right there. So I am re-inking each time just because um, I don't want to, you know, stamp on another part of the stamp, but then end up going into an area that doesn't have ink on it. So each time I stamp, I do re-ink. Now what I'm doing is I'm going to add some subtle colors that are very well directed. So I'm using these Artix brush pens and any brush pen or any marker you have will work well for this, but I like the brush, the real brush pens here that have the little bristles over a felt tip pen just because I think uh, a felt tip pen might actually lift up some of that ink even though I did heat set it before I began. So I went in and I colored um, all of my little butterflies and now I'm using some homemade sponge daubers to add some more distress ink right from the pads. After that, I went ahead and dry each of the coins just to make sure that ink was set. And now I'm giving it a spritz of water. Now either um, use a sprayer that gives you really big droplets of water or flick it on with a paintbrush so that you have big globs of water and then blot it with a cloth, like an old rag or paper towel. And that's gonna take away the excess Distress Oxide ink and give you that gorgeous bleach spot look that um, the Distress Oxide is known for. So now we're gonna do a couple techniques with some um, embossing powder and glitter. And I have to tell you that this did not work as well as I had hoped. So the first thing I did was I melted a spoonful of embossing powder over a candle and then I just kind of drizzled it on. Um, the cool thing was that it made like perfect little enamel drops when I did this and I thought, oh, I should do this on my Teflon mat and save them for later. Um, I thought I could sprinkle in some uh, glitter and have it stick onto the embossing powder, but it just dried too quickly. I guess I could reheat it with my heat tool if I wanted to and maybe get it to stick, but uh, it just didn't stick as well as I thought. And then I kind of wondered if maybe that kind of greasy surface from the Distress Oxide might be a problem problem as well. But in any event, I decided I would drizzle some more of that embossing powder on for decoration and um, just make sure it's adhered later. So now I'm adding a little sparkle to the wings with a Wink Estella pen, which is like a, it's like a water brush with this shimmery glittery ink in it. And if you don't have this, you could use Pearl X, you could use any of your metallic watercolors, you could even use um, metallic eyeshadow. Um, 
just like scrape a little off your eyeshadow palette if you are going to still use it on your eyes so you don't cross contaminate with art supplies but any of that stuff with mica in it will give you that little bit of shimmer and be so pretty but you don't have to you don't have to buy the expensive stuff now here you can see my problem with my embossing either my coins were still a little damp or the distress oxide was a little greasy but whatever reason my embossing um, drops didn't really stick so all i'm doing is using a little strong adhesive and this is the beacon three and one adhesive and i'm going to glue the these uh, embellishments down onto the coins. Now this glue is kind of like a liquid hot glue. It strings a bit, but um, you can e easily pull those strings off later or, the, or just kind of brush them off after everything's dry. So it's not a big issue, but I do recommend gluing down any of those um, embossing powder drops if you decided to do them. I just kind of went and kind of flicked at them with my fingernails, see if they would come loose. And if they did, I glued them. And then I decided I did want some of that chunky diamond dust glitter. So I'm going around the edges and just adding some of that um, Beacon 3-in-1, and that'll give me a nice base to put that glitter into. Now, if I had to do it over again, at this point, before adding the glitter, I would have sealed these coins, or actually probably before adding the embossing powder, because um, I could use like a matte Krylon spray. You want like an oil-based spray, not a water-based where it's going to activate all of your distress oxide but if I had sealed them at this point that would be good I don't imagine there's going to be a problem with the ink rubbing off unless it gets wet but you know still I probably would have sealed them at that stage I did still seal it after the fact and I had to reapply glitter because it takes the shine away from the glitter uh, so now I'm just sprinkling glitter onto the wet glue that I put there and I'm doing that over a piece of paper so I can easily just dump the glitter back into the receptacle when I'm done. I'm using a silicone tool here just to make sure I have all that glitter pressed into the glue firmly so it doesn't all come off when um, when it's dry so just any anything you have this silicone or a piece of wax paper something that's not going to stick to the glue you just press that glitter in and that will work out really well and then you can see after i dump off the excess glitter how pretty it is with just that little bit of sparkle on there i think this looks really nice and it just gives it a little extra oomph for a pretty simple project really I set these aside to dry and then I decided to work on some customized backings for my artist trading cards. And since I've been obsessed with my jelly plate lately, I decided that I would use the same Distress Oxide colors I used on the artist trading coin fronts to embellish the paper for the back. So I just um, put down a nice coating of the warmer colors and this stencil that's also from topflightstamps.com. And I just kind of went over a, I, I just had some cardstock scraps actually and I just kind of went around and pressed that pattern into it so I could remove the paint from or the ink from the stencil openings and you got to push in there real good but because the jelly plate is so squishy it'll allow you to get in there and pull that ink off and then when you take that off yeah uh, that stencil off you're going to have this really neat um, ghost image which actually has a little bit more oomph than the than the uh you know, positive image. And I'm just pressing that in there too. And I'm using the first piece to collect up any of the extra ink around the edges. There's really no rhyme or reason here. You're, you can't mess it up. It's going to look wonderful. Just make sure you get any of those colors that you've already used. Now, since this stencil had all sorts of ink on it from when I, um, first put it down on the inked plate i'm trying to transfer that back onto the plate just to give me a little bit more grunge and patterns you can see there where i've been able to transfer from the stencil onto the um the plate i know like you can feel like you're wasting a lot of ink sometimes when you're doing these techniques but we're really using every bit up and with the distress oxide inks i actually got re-inkers for all of the pads that i have because i like to use it as paint and i use it a little bit more vigorously than other uh, pads i don't have to worry about running out and i find it as it's an excellent use for those pads. Um, there are like bundles where you can get the like a set of 12 of the pads and 12 of the reinkers together. And that's what I did. I got the um, well, I got the um, got the pads individually, but then I got the reinkers in bundles like that. And it saves a lot of money and it makes sure they don't run out, which is which makes me want to use something more if I know I'm not going to run out of it. On this plate where I've put in the cooler colors from the collection, I just rolled the foam stamp over it, and that is a great way to get texture. You can also emboss cards 
cardstock and press that onto the plate to pull off some of the ink. Um, and then, but when you use a stamp to pull off the ink, you can actually stamp on your other prints and give it a little extra texture. And um, I'm just kind of selectively bouncing my cardstock here and there to pick up some ink. And now I'm going in with um, that first print that had the positive image and I'm pulling this print to kind of fill in the backgrounds. So just, you know, we're only gonna be using little circles from this whole image. So just don't worry about it. Have fun and get lots of color down. To fill in some of the boring areas or white spaces or just kind of give a little bit more color representation for colors that aren't there, I'm using my sponge applicators and the Distress Oxide inks. Now, because the inks are kind of opaque, they're designed to be layered and to be worked on top of each other, they actually don't get muddy, which is awesome. So uh, you just want to throw as much color at it as you want. You can also go over it with stencils and add even more pattern on top. Try to repeat designs you've already used when impossible, and that way you'll have that nice, um, you know, rhythm and repetition on the back side of the artist trading coin that you had on the front side of the trading coin. Now all we need to do is spritz on a little water. Again, we're going to get that kind of bleached out effect and beautiful texture that the Distress Oxide inks is known for. Um, let it sit a bit and then blot off any of that uh, water so you get that little batiki bleach look. After that dries, we're going to cut it into circles. I was trying to figure out if I wanted the circles to go all the way to the edge on the back or if I wanted them a little bit smaller. And I decided I would go a little bit smaller just because I figured if I didn't line it up perfectly, I didn't want it to like scooch over to the edge and have to sand it down or anything. So um, that's what I did. You could do whatever you want and you can use a die, you can use a circle cutter, you could use scissors and a compass. It doesn't really matter how you cut those circles out. Um, and just do whatever you like. And on the back, I'm stamping on this saying that says life is a piece of mixed media art because I thought it was really fitting for this. And then all I'll do after this is all done is just write my name and date it. Um, so that way when I trade it with somebody, they'll know where they got it from. Now I'm gonna glue these papers onto the back. Now remember that was just a die cut out of cardstock of that paper that we made. And I'm just giving it a fairly generous coating of Beacon 3-in-1. I'm making sure I go right out to the edge. I'm sorry, I'm off camera there. And then I'm gonna press it firmly onto the back of one of the coins. And you just wanna make sure that you get really good contact there so it doesn't lift up. And then um, I'm just gonna let it dry face down on the table or the paper side face down on the table so that way it can um, be, you know, kind of press down really well and I shouldn't have to worry about any air bubbles or anything. Now the best thing about using a die cut for this as opposed to another type of circle cutter or punch is that since we did the inking on cardstock and we got it wet, sometimes stuff like that can warp, but when you do it on, when you run it through a die cutter, it kind of flattens it out again. So that is really helpful in this sort of project. If you want a more finished edge to this project, you could use some black paint or a uh, black marker and you could color around the backing paper and the edges of the coins but honestly I kind of like the look of the rough painty edges on the side so that's again completely up to you and you can make yours however you like. I hope you enjoyed this project. I thought it was so much fun to make and I hope there'll be people that want to trade these with me um, at the stamp show because that's um, that's fun. I love stuff like that so uh, maybe that will encourage you to do something like that too or maybe use some of these techniques on some kindness rocks or some mail art Art or just something to brighten somebody's day. If you want to find the supplies I used today, you can find a list in the video description and links to our sponsor topflightstamps.com with a coupon code. So check that out. Please give me a thumbs up before you go. Until next time, happy crafting.